Congressman Kanner declined the offer to show up and talk to his own constituents and the American people at this critical hour. And he's, you know, it's not that hard, is it, to walk 100 yards across a parking lot to be here? That's just me, chief organizer of the Tea Party Patriots National Organization, of which Richmond Tea Party is a member. I'm very proud to have her here today. Um, she's a very, very busy person. When she just told me her schedule in the parking lot, uh, I clicked out somewhere around Carolinas. I couldn't even keep up. So this is really a privilege to have Jenny Beth um, and Brent, frankly, coming and headlining this today. So would you please give a nice warm welcome to Jenny Beth Martin. If Obamacare is not ready for big business, big labor, and big government, it's not ready for the American people. In July, Congressman Cantor said this, rather than continuing to delay the predictable pain until another election day has passed, we should scrap this entire law and instead implement a patient-centered reforms before any more damage is done to our economy or health care families depend on. He said this, right? We agree with him that if they implement this law, they are going to do damage to our economy and our health care. Congressman Kanner, if you vote to spend our hard-earned tax dollars on this law, you are voting to do damage to our economy and to harm our health care. Whether in the Senate or in the House, those who vote to pay for Obamacare with our hard-earned tax dollars are voting in favor of the law that is not ready for big business, big labor, or big government. Those who vote to pay for Obamacare with our hard-earned tax dollars are voting in favor of destroying the work week that produces the very tax dollars they spend so easily. Those who vote in favor of paying for Obamacare with our tax dollars are voting to exempt themselves from a law they insist we must pay for and we must follow. Congressman Kanner has a choice to make. Stand up for the American people and do what's right for all Americans by funding the entire government and stop spending our money on Obamacare. Yeah. Or he can stand with the special interest in DC, big business, big labor, and big government while sticking this disastrous law on us, the American people. With all the delays, with all the problems, the exemptions, the delays, this choice should be simple. Congressman Kanner, the United States Senate, the United States, Con the United States Congress do the right thing and exempt America from this law. Our next guest, um, equally well known in the media, uh, he's a very accomplished author, very intelligent commentator in uh, all sorts of media. I've seen him on TV all over, stations everywhere. Um, we are very honored to have somebody of his stature come to Congressman Kanner's sidewalk today. Would you please put him together for Brent Bozell? The question is, where is House Majority Leader Eric Kanner on this law today? It seems like he seems to want it to happen. He's refusing to stop it while telling his fellow Virginians he's doing everything in his power to stop it. Some of the president's closest allies, like Teamster President James Hoffa, was an endur early endorser of this disaster, but even they today want an exemption from it. Hoffa now says that Obamacare will, and I quote here, destroy the 40-hour work week which is the backbone of the American middle class, and that it will, quote, hurt millions of Americans. This is the unions saying this, not conservatives. 
Eric Cantor, you can stop this disaster. Where are you? The only way to put an end to this is for a majority leader. I use those words, majority leader, Eric Cantor, to stand up and say, enough is enough. We are defunding this monstrosity. <laughs> Defund it, Congressman Cantor. Defund this awful, awful law. It turns out that everyone is having to experience the pain of Obamacare. But not everyone. Some people are getting exemptions. If Go ahead, boo. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's extraordinary to see how many cronies and friends of this administration get exemptions. It's extraordinary to see how the president illegally, illegally gave an exemption to big business when he had no constitutional authority to do so. This is a law that the president wanted passed and the House and the Senate passed. What is it about the Republicans that make them in, unable and so unwilling to put an end to it now that they can. Maybe, just maybe, it's because somehow, believe it or not, these same Republicans have quietly exempted themselves. If that, folks, if that isn't an outrage, there is no such thing as outrage. We should be outraged. We should be telling every one of our members of Congress, if you can exempt yourself, exempt America while you're at it. Massive amounts of taxes, regulations, and subsidies are about to kick in. Once these treacherous things are in place, there will be little, if no chance at all, to roll back what will be the largest and most damaging entitlement program in the history of the United States of America. Unfortunately, Congressman Kiner, along with many Republicans, are on their recess right now and hiding because they don't want to face the people who voted them into those offices with those very nice conference rooms in there that they can't come out to real America to explain themselves why they won't do what they pledged to you that they would do. Come on out, Congressman Kiner. Come on out and have a talk with us. We're here to tell House, I say it again, Majority Leader, Eric Kanner, to, <laughs> to keep your promise to your constituents and to the rest of America. Eric Kanner, if you really do believe in defunding this monstrosity, it's very simple. Raise your voice with your fellow Congressman Mark Meadows, with Senator Mike Lee, with Senator Ted Cruz, and with so many others who are trying to do the right thing. Congressman Kanner, say no once and for all to defunding Obamacare. Never again are you going to pay for another bill. Never again are you going to put your name on another passed bill that appropriates more money away from the taxpayer of America to this awful, awful law. Congressman Kanner, we need you to keep your promise to the people of Virginia and to join us in this effort. Congressman Kanner, our message to you today is unequivocal. If you fund it, you own it, and we will do everything in our power, everything, to let your constituents know how it is you voted. And it is they, it is they who will have the last word on this. Thank you. My next speaker, believe it or not, Tea Parties are maturing politically. We're growing up. Rallies and flags and, and everything are necessary and wonderful. It's great to see everybody out here and see all the Gadsden flags, etc. But um, we're growing up and maturing politically in that we are starting to coordinate our efforts and get in to see legislators and propose legislation to be put on the floor of the State House or the Congress. And part of that effort is that multiple Tea Parties in Virginia have united under the Virginia Tea Party Patriot Federation. We're now going to hear from the head of the Federation here in Virginia, a fellow liberty-loving Tea Party supporter, and his name is Mark Darty. Put your hands together for him. Now, Ronald Reagan once said that you and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We will preserve for our children the last best hope of man on earth. 
Now, Obamacare has a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny is a train wreck. And under Obamacare, the 40-hour work week has a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny is a 29-hour work week. And under Obamacare, 15,000 spouses of UPS employees have a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny is termination of their employee health insurance benefits. And as Brent, Brent or Jenny Best said, under Obamacare, Delta Airlines has a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny is a projected $100 million increase in their health insurance costs. And under Obamacare, the 190 million Americans with private health insurance have a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny is sharply higher health insurance premiums. And under Obamacare, the left-wing Obamacare navigators have a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny is a broken GPS in their car so they won't be able to navigate their, their way out of a paper bag. And under Obamacare, the, the free health services that are offered under Obamacare have a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny is those so-called freebies are going to cost an arm and a leg. And under Obamacare, this Obamacare health insurance application has a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny... Yeah. Defund Obamacare. Thank you. Now, let's shift for a moment to a few other destinies of interest. The EPA has a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny is gas fracking, coal mining, offshore energy exploration, the Keystone Pipeline, and abundant cheap energy for America. And Lois Lerner has a rendezvous with destiny. And that destiny is a House Select Committee on Tea Party Targeting and Harassment. Jail, 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 jail. The IRS has another rendezvous with destiny, and that dis destiny is a simple flat tax or fair tax with all, without all the 501c34, 5678 gobbledygook. And our $16.7 trillion in U.S. debt, plus long-term liabilities, has a rendezvous with destiny. And that destiny, if we don't get our act together in the U.S., is the bankrupt country of Greece. And the easy money policy of the Federal Reserve has a rendezvous with destiny. And that destiny is heavy future inflation. And Hillary Clinton has a rendezvous with destiny. And that destiny is a House Select Committee on Benghazi. And Attorney General Eric Holder has a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny is the unemployment line. Yeah. And a date in court. And the NSA has a rendezvous with destiny. And that destiny is the Fourth Amendment and the United States Constitution, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects. And on August 19th, at the General Assembly building in Richmond, the Merck Committee, that's the Medicaid Innovation and Reform uh, Commission, they had a rendezvous with destiny, and that destiny was 700 Tea Party and AFP activists flooding the General Assembly. And finally, Majority Leader Eric Kanner has a rendezvous with destiny. And that destiny is either a personal appearance at the town hall meeting at 6 o'clock at the Marriott or an empty chair. At this point, we would have a little question and answer period. But, um, well, he's not here. So you can't ask him. So instead, since we got him here right now and they're a precious resource not to be wasted, how about we ask a little question and answer period with Brent Bozell and Jenny Beth Martin. Ready? All right, let's do it. Some of the staffers from Congressman Cantor's office are telling you that they're not supporting this effort to defund because of mandatory spending. If I got that 
response from my congressman or senator, my response question to them would be, who made it mandatory? And if those people and that legislative body can make it mandatory, are you telling me you don't have the power to stop spending our money on it? I'd also ask how, if it's so mandatory, then why are, and they can't do anything about it, why has the president been able to delay this for big business? The Office of Personnel Management has been able to create an exemption for Congress and their staff, not through a legislative process. What we're asking for is a constitutional thing to do. It's to move through both chambers of Congress and to be signed by the president. We're not asking for a single stroke of the pen to change the law. And one more question. Some members of Congress's staff are telling you that they are not exempt from this law. The law says they have to live under the Obamacare exchanges. The people across this country who have to live under the Obamacare exchanges are not getting a, five, a roughly $5,000 subsidy, paid for with our tax money, by the way, to live under the exchanges like the congressmen's staff are getting. And as far as we can tell, that is an exemption that the rest of America does not get. Congress has the power to do lots of things. It's given to it by the Constitution. There is a reason why it's a co-equal branch with the presidency. It is stunning to me that every time there's an opportunity to put an end to this nightmare, there's always an excuse, always an excuse. There's always tomorrow we'll do it, tomorrow we'll do it. And it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows. But the point you just hit on is the point that I'm making. Majority leader. Someone needs to send Eric Cantor a memo. You are in the majority, for God's sakes. And you're the leader of that majority. Why are you hiding from the American people? The reason he is there, the reason that Eric Cantor is the majority leader in the House, the reason that the Republicans are the majority in the House, is because they pledged to do this, and that's what got them elected. I will tell you, I will tell you this, and I used to say this privately, I'll say this publicly now. On the eve of the 2010 election, I met with Congressman Boehner privately, and I said to him, Congressman, this is when it was understood that they were going to win the majority, and there was no question about it. I said, Congressman, do you understand that you are not going to win this election? It is the Democrats who are going to lose in 2010, and you're being given one last chance to do things right. And he said, yes, I understand. No, he didn't understand, because they're doing exactly what they did that got them thrown out in 2006. So if that's what needs to happen, as far as I'm concerned, speaking for myself only here, I just as, th as soon throw the bums out. The question is, if you couldn't hear her, why does the congressman need three offices, D.C. and here and wherever else? I can partially answer that, and then I'll turn it over to the pros. Um, he needs an office here to hide in. No, I, no, I, no I, I do think that there ought to be some kind of legislation that mandates, I used to think, that mandates that members of Congress go home. Um, but I think there needs to be a second one, and it's that they stay home. That's my opinion. <laughs> I like it. Um, they asked me on Fox News a couple weeks ago, what do you think Congress should do first when they get back from their recess, their August recess? And I said, clean out their desk and go home. I agree with what Brent has said, and the way I've answered this often when I'm asked is, it's, I'm not concerned about the next election right now. I am concerned with what is right for America. And I know what is right for America is to ensure that we are all still treated equally in this country. We're in a country where all men are created equal, not where Congress and their staff are above the law and they expect us to pay, pay for them to stay in their positions of power. Yeah. If they 
going to win with the American people, stand up for Americans and do what's right and remind Americans that it's the president who delayed this for big business. It's the president's administration who wrote that exemption for Congress. But if they stand by and vote to fund it, it's as good as allowing it to happen. Okay, we believe strongly in the Tea Party that it's not just about professional slick politicians. In fact, the less the better of that. That it's all about you, the volunteers, the grassroots, and we're gonna start hearing from us. Um, I've got a few people who requested to speak beforehand. I'm gonna give up some microphone time to them. I know a couple of them very well. They have good things to say. And um, then anybody in a little bit, anybody that would like to come up and say, say 30 seconds to two minutes or so, you'll be welcome to. But in the meantime, we've got a few grassroots type people. I'm gonna start off first with um, my friend Bill Evans. He's a veteran of the United States Navy. He rose to the rank of, was it six-star admiral, I think? No? Okay, five only. Couldn't fit any more on his collar, so they stopped him there. But uh, now, Bill Evans, he worked for a living. He was, he was a non-commissioned officer. I've got a lot of respect for him. And like I said, he's responsible for a lot of the setup that you see out here today. He's gonna to talk to you for just a few minutes. I like his words. Here you go, here's Bill Evans, one of us. Hey, you guys. I'm gonna tell you exactly what's going on in Washington. Before I do, I want you to know that we the people decided long ago that we live in a republic. A republic, if you're not sure what that is, check the dictionary. We decided we would do that without a king or a king government, where the people are in charge of the government, not the other way around. Progressives have fought hard to change our unique way of life with a progressive United Nations, a new world order. I am not politically correct, but I am correct. Politically correct people march hand in hand with progressives and progressives have hijacked this country. They are in both parties and they are addicted to power. Progressives want to control you with that power and they will if we allow 13 million new illegal progressives to overrun the system. Progressives care more about their power than the Constitution, the country, or you. And have proven that by not standing on moral principles. They have made clear that they desire to control every facet of your life from your health care to your diet, from common core education to your guns, from an unsecure border to amnesty, from freedom of speech to the seizure of your data, because they know what's best for you. Ah, I think not. Don't spy on me, bro. Don't you do it. They have accomplished this by having a media that refuses to report fairly or report at all. They've served up race-based distraction in order to silence you. They have sold us all a bill of goods on the emotional premise that we are an uncaring, mean-spirited, woman-hating party. Now the latest distraction of war. Ooh. In order to take the focus off the looming financial demise of our nation, knowing full well that you will vote for any Republican, regardless of error, in order to stop that progressive democratic agenda. 
We've all heard this. We need a candidate who is willing to compromise. No! no more. We need a candidate who will stand on principle, one who will say what they mean and mean what they say. <laughs> Compromise has gotten us into a national catastrophe. Compromise has gotten us financial ruin and moral decay. It has, in fact, kept the Rhino Republicans in office thus making the parties the same. We don't need two Democratic parties. That notwithstanding, we will no longer sit by idly and hope that the Republican Party will do the right thing or that, that they will do what we the people have put them in office to do. We will, in fact, take this party back to a place of sanity. Remember, progressives are in both parties. It is no longer about left and right. It is about right and wrong. It's about freedom or serfdom. Progressives will do or say anything to stay in office. So, Mr. Cantor, I tell you now, we will not allow the Republican Party to march hand in hand with the progressives. We will do everything in our power to remove you and all rep and all progressives from office. We will use every tool in our arsenal to strip you of your power and restore a conservative candidate who will defend the Constitution, who will defend the people from tyranny, and who will stand on moral principle. Your gamble, your gamble is that we will vote for you. Make no mistake, make no mistake. You would be wrong to think that we would allow you even one more term. We will vote for anyone who would stand on principle before we would vote for a rhino Republican who would sell us out at every turn in order to maintain their power. Tea parties across this nation, I call on tea parties across this nation to send a true, just, and upright candidates to Washington. Leaders who will serve the people Leaders who will take an oath. Leaders who will stand on moral principle and will bring back a country founded on Judeo-Christian values. And sir, you and your power will be gone. God bless you all in our fight for freedom and our fight for our God and our country. Teach your children how important freedom is because it can be gone that fast. Wow. <laughs> that just shows you what's beating in the hearts of the average Tea Party supporter right there. You don't need to be a professional politician. He knows what's going on, does he not? Oh, my goodness. All right, um, Bob Shannon, are you still here? 
All right, Bob Shannon's going to come up. He's the leader of the Mechanicsville, or rather the cat, straight cat corraler organizer of the Mechanicsville Tea Party. Uh, he's the guy with Bob Keeler that's responsible for all the beautiful signs out in Hanover County and et cetera. Yeah, this is the guy. How many do you have now? Uh, 200 some. About 175 signs. And, uh, you know, only a few accidents for people trying to read them when they go by. Whoa. Okay. Bob Shannon's got about uh, a couple, two minutes worth of things he'd like to say. Here we go. Bob. Thank you, Mark. Sure. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out today and supporting what is a wonderful effort of the Richmond Tea Party. Let's give Larry a hand. This is leadership. I'm going to tie into what Bill just said, but I'm going to be a little bit more direct and a little bit more harsh. <laughs> For those of you that know me, that shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. Three months ago, Rush Limbaugh said on his radio program, Republicans don't want smaller government. They just want to take turns running it. Yesterday, Matt Drudge said in the Drudge Report, the difference today isn't between the Democrats and the Republicans. The difference is between the Democrats and Republicans and the Libertarians. On August the 13th at the Bull and Bear Club downtown, John Taylor, president of Tertium Quid and host of the Tuesday morning group said this, Republicans will not change until they know you will not vote for them. Let me repeat that. Republicans will not change until they know you will not vote for them. I don't know about you, but every election cycle they come around and plead their case and tell us the conservative principles that they're going to adhere to this time. How many times, how many times are you going to come to rallies like this but walk into a voting booth in November and vote for the less of two evils? It's time to fight. John Taylor said it. They will not change until they know we will not vote for them. In November, act like a trained seal or cast a vote of conscience. Thank you for your time today, ladies and gentlemen. Suzanne Orsink, did I say that right, is going to speak to us for about two minutes, and then we'll um, actually take, I want the seventh, how many people, seventh district, before you walk away, okay, uh, you're not walking away, you're signing letters. Seventh district people are going to be taking these letters into his office. So right after Suzanne speaks, that's what we're doing. We promise we'll leave you a little pizza left, okay? All right, Suzanne. Thank you, thank you so very much. My speech is on Syria. Congressman Cantor has said that there is a compelling national security interest to prevent and respond to weapons of mass destruction, especially by a terrorist state like Syria. This sounds like very much like doublespeak when we are supporting the Syrian rebels who are al-Qaeda jihadists by sending millions of dollars, supplying armor and heavy weapons while they are chanting death to Americans and saying they will slaughter without compromise? These are not moderates. It has been promised that no U.S. foot soldiers will be there, yet there are reports that Marines are on the border of Syria and Jordan. You are supporting an administration that has been less than generous. It is disingenuous about the IRS scandal, Fast and Furious, and supporting the instability in Egypt by the Muslim Brotherhood. Doublespeak is when you are supporting amnesty, when you know that a good percentage of these immigrants coming across the border are jihadists, 
Where is your sense of national security for the borders of Arizona and Texas? Why aren't you calling for the resignation of Eric Holder for Fast and Furious? You were instrumental at throwing the Department of Defense under the bus when other nations were very busily building up their defense. Iran, Russia, and China know our weaknesses. This does not seem like the time to be mil militarily throwing in our might. In your letter I received only yesterday addressing this issue, you said that it is a national security issue. I would suggest our meddling in other countries' civil war is just that. The United States is instrumental in undermining the stability of Egypt, ushering in the Muslim Brotherhood that began immediate assault on its neighbors and Christian citizens. These people butchered citizens and torched churches. This president undermined the stability of Libya, leading directly to our enemies celebrating the anniversary of 911 by torturing our Ambassador Chris Stevens along with fellow American citizens while we watched and everyone was silent. While cantors vote, he is still not supporting the same Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda in Syria. The magnitude of what you're about to set in motion is unthinkable. If we didn't want a super state in the Middle East, we would not aid our enemy and definitely not devastate our defense. To top this all off, I'm pretty sure our military didn't sign up to fight for Al-Qaeda. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> These decisions are contrary and only serve to serve chaos. What is this administration doing? It's allowed Russia and Iran to be clear winners in this, but this chaos was set into motion by an impotent Congress. Why aren't you listening to your constituents? You're not the government, we are the government. And without us, you would not be there. You are to act as our agent. Your constituents will, will, no, will be no longer silenced. So remember these words, you have awakened a sleeping giant. Thank you. Here's what we're gonna do. Right now, they're finishing up the letters. There were some people that wanted to get them in the bag. We're gonna put them in this blue bag. Seventh district people. You're gonna meet right out here in the parking lot and I will go with you. He used to be my congressman, but I wisened up and moved to Powhatan. And now I don't have to live under Congressman Canner anymore. So I'll go with you as far as the door. But then I want you to go see your congressman and take some letters into his office and just tip that bag upside down on the first intern's desk you see and let him know he's got mail today. Who owns the office? We do.
I, I think you earn some pizza. Go get some pizza. Hey, that's a lot. I'll see you at the Marriott.